Hey friends, I'm back and I wanted to share with you a couple of examples of what modern day paganistic idolatry looks like in Greek lettered organizations. Because when people denounce, members attack them like a pack of wolves and they always deny it. They say, oh, I know the Lord. I know God. I'm not worshiping another God. Well, honey, I'm here to tell you respectfully you are and i want to walk you through what this looks like because if you don't view this through the eyes of the holy spirit you will not know and we know the word says people perish due to lack of knowledge so go with me and i'm going to walk you through a few examples we're going to start here with the regional conference opening ceremony okay so as i said we're starting here with the regional conference opening ceremony and one thing you'll notice uh, with many Greek lettered organizations is that they love lighting candles. And if you're wondering why, it's because uh, it's a Wiccan practice and Wiccans, uh, they dig all into the occult and witchcraft, right? And so what I've read is that when you light candles, it helps you make a connection to the spiritual world. So what you're doing is you're creating a bridge between the natural and the spiritual so that you can have an inviting presence for the spirits to pop up and communicate with you or to influence you or the atmosphere in some sort of way. So we see candles being lit. Um, this is blasphemous in my opinion because we get all of our wisdom from the Lord. Um, he lights our path and we have a burning fire of the Holy Spirit within us. All right. We don't need a, a torch of wisdom from anything. So let's look at the prayer. So the chaplain says, let us pray. And then if, if you'll notice, they mentioned this long name here and it's capitalized. So this name is a person, place or thing. Right, because it's capitalized and it says gracious infinite spirit of wisdom. So who is that? Like that's not a spirit of God. And it's asking, oh, here we go. It's asking for their hearts to be set ablaze. I'm paraphrasing, right? And notice they say thy divine flame. The word divine is defined as of God, our one true God, or of a God. In this instance, this divine means a little case G God. All right. So it's asking that um, they basically, you know, uphold the sacred trust. Really, y'all, I hate reciting this. That's why I'm paraphrasing it. And look at this. They're asking, they're stating they're going to invoke its presence. I just said candles are lit to communicate with spirits. Candles are lit so spirits can be in the atmosphere and influence those that are around them or to provide knowledge. And here we have it. Um, so it's asking that this spirit provides them with guidance and basically controls what they say and do according to the spirit's will. And the note here says witchcraft because when we invoke something, if it's outside of the spirit of God, and I'll say this. I usually don't hear the word invoke mentioned from Christians. We don't say we're invoking the Holy Spirit. We just pray to the Lord, ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us. Um, but this just sounds sinister. And notice that they close it with amen. But there's a really important part missing. They're missing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So that is a red flag right there. And let's look at what invoke means. So invoke is a verb. So it's an action and it is to cite or appeal to someone or something as an authority for an action or in support of. We're not going to worry about the argument part because this is all about context. Look at the second uh, definition. Call on a deity or spirit in prayer as a witness are for inspiration. To me, this aligns with everything we just saw. And it's interesting because they're given this capitalized spirit with that name authority 
for its presence to be in that location. And they're calling on it, right? They said, let us pray. Now it's a witness. And they're asking for it to, to control what they say and do. So let's go back and make sure this lines up. All right. So yeah, it's a prayer. They've called on this spirit. And they're asking for its presence to be there. They're asking it for guidance. That they'll say and do things according to its will. But y'all, this is not the will of God at all. No one can deny this. If you do, you are spiritually blind. So let's see what we should be doing when we call upon the will of God or what God desires us to do. In Psalms 143, we see a great example it says, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. So notice spirit is capitalized, but we know this is the spirit of God. Okay, this is the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at what the Holy Spirit is and what it's supposed to do. In John 14, verse 17 Jesus tells us he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Let's look at another example. All right. In Galatians 525, it says, since we are living by the spirit, let us follow the spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So we are calling on the spirit of God to lead every part of our lives, not a demonic spirit, according to their will, telling us what to say and do. Y'all, I've read a few uh, Greek letter organization rituals, and they're always asking some type of spirit to guide them. And that is not of God. That is completely blasphemous. Uh, I want to share another example with you all. So here is a portion of the uh initiation ceremony for uh these ladies a part of this group and notice here that they say i so and so and then they promise in the presence of the eternal spirit of truth again who is that that is minerva all right just like we have different names to glorify and honor god based on his purpose in our lives right uh we have, we call him Elohim. We call him El Shaddai. We call him Yahweh. Um, we call him Jehovah Gabor. We call him Jehovah Sabaoth, right? Um, the Lord of hosts. Well, they got different names for their demonic spirits too. And notice that um, it's basically, you know, the ladies are coming to an agreement that they will, you know, keep these secrets um, of the organization and the second highlighted area says that they'll dedicate their lives to the nine cardinal virtues of the organization. Uh, but here's the thing about it. We don't need to dedicate our lives to any organization or cardinal virtues because we have the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. All right. And that is all that we need along with the word of God. If you go down a little further, you'll see there is a Delta prayer. Again, it's a prayer to the organization. It is not a prayer to our God. And the president says, we believe in a spiritual life, but we leave it. We leave to the individual the selection of the medium for its outward manifestation. And a medium is how something is expressed or communicated. So they're saying they believe in a spiritual life, but they're not saying that they believe in the word of the Holy Bible, they're not saying they follow Christ. You'll never see Jesus Christ listed anywhere in this ritual book. And I haven't seen Jesus Christ listed in any Greek letter organization's ritual book. You can see that poem down there. It's very witchcrafty. Um, and I encourage you to look it up. So um, I pray this spoke to you. I pray this helps you. And if you're wondering about the character of God, look it up, start to read the Bible more, pray about it, fast about it, and he will show you the character of God and the character of the Holy Spirit. Please share this with someone. This is also a great website for references.